Hey guys, Scooby Doobies here, and today I I've been watching some good anime videos, and I was like, crap, I forgot my daily series, School Days. Guys, if you don't know what School Days are, School Days is a series when there's a when there's kids go to school and all that. Yeah, it's like my it's my first go anime videos in fact. And I plan on making completion. Yeah, and I totally forgot about the movie. Guys, I'm making a movie right now, and it's gonna come out at my my fourth anniversary. So stay tuned on that. And I'm making it right now. Also, one thing. The the movie is still on the works though. Don't worry. It's not cancelled like the other movies that I just cancelled. So yeah. Oh, also, remember that Scooby Doo web series? It's gonna come out my anniversary too. And the behavior card day. I'm gonna make three videos. So yeah. And at night, it's gonna be another completion. Anyways, never mind. Or before the anniversary. I, I can't, you all know I can't make any promises, you know? Anyways, now let's rank some Scooby-Doo live action movies. I already did the shows, I already did the, uh, I already did the movies, but not the live action movies. Because I haven't, you know, I didn't give up my full opinion on the, on the, on the Scooby-Doo movies. So now, Let's go with the Scooby-Doo live-action movies, shall we? Well, I'm not saying all of this is bad. I'm just going to give out my opinion. Now, let's start with Daphne and Velma. What's my opinion on this movie? I don't like it. Who made this? I mean, who, who made this? Look, guys. I mean, who made this? It was Fred... What was Fred, Shaggy, and Scooby? They ignored the Scooby Doo formula. Yes, there's mysteries. Yes, there's teenagers. But where's Scooby Doo? The Scooby Doo formula, what makes Scooby Doo so good is that one, there's a mascot, which is Scooby. Uh, two, plus teenagers, which is actually Fred, Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy. It plus mysteries plus and, and minus Scooby Doo. That's Scooby Doo. But Velma and Daphne is not even close. That's why the movie failed. It's because there's no Scooby Doo. With no Scooby Doo, no movie at all. This is why you should not make movies without the main character. It does not work. It does not work at all. And some people have been saying this is a prequel, which is so stupid because the live-action movies are not even canon to the originals. So, yeah. And plus, they're ignoring the pup... Same as Scooby-Doo Mystery Begins, they're ignoring the pup named Scooby-Doo. This is the adaptations. In adaptations, you're supposed... I know this changes, but it has to make sense. But doing this does not make sense. The movie is outright confusing because what is this? The future or or the present? Because there's robots here, there's this robots there, there's a lot of technology and all that. Not only that, but in real life, guess what? When this when this movie comes out, I at school, some people have been saying that Velma and Daphne is better than the rest of the Scooby-Doo movies. And it's, and it's a masterpiece. Yeah, we have a full argument about this. And I told them to watch the actual shows and movies. And, and the next day later, they feel insulted. And they apologize to me for, for bashing my opinion. And for, for not only bashing my opinion when I told them, nah. I prefer the original. And guess what? They start they start arguing with me and they apologize for bashing my opinion. They feel insulted. And they hate and they hate the movie too. 
Those were girls, guys. Those were girls. It's, it looks like a fan movie, but no, it was made by Warner Brothers. I'm not kidding. It's literally made by Warner Brothers. It's not a fan film at all. It only works if it's a fan film. But the actual company and is an actual movie? Who thought this is a good idea? I bet this is how the Velma, the Velma writers were like, Oh, I had an idea. How about we can make a woke series with Scooby-Doo woke series without Scooby-Doo because Velma and Daphne did it. This is how it failed. It's because without its main character, without, without, what, without, you know, ignoring things that what makes Scooby-Doo so good, this adaptation is trash. I don't like it at all. The jokes are the the jokes are not even funny for, to begin with at all. They try to convince us that this is canon, but it's not canon at all. That's what these two that's what that's what Scooby Doo Miss We Begin. Scooby Doo Curse of the Lake monster attempts to do. They try to make us think that this is canon. But in reality, it's not. Live action movies are not canon at all. Those were adaptations. And adaptations, they do it's not canon to the original at all. Anyways, now let's continue on. Now, speaking of Scooby Doo Mystery Begins, I'm going to put it at 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 the C version. I'm sorry. I know some people love this movie, but I don't know if I like or hate this movie. They did. It looks. I know, guys. I know this looked like an actual Scooby Doo show. There's, you know, there's a monster with masks, but girls are still real. The mystery begins to feel accurate, but not too accurate, because they did screw up their personalities. Uh, which, the first movie seems so good. It's, it, it, when I first saw this first movie, I was so excited, and I actually loved this movie. Unfortunately, my respects is all... My res my respect is ruined. It's ruined, and it dumps down when the second movie came. The villain review is unexpected, and it's like in the show, but um, for, say, it's like in the show, including the live, including the second movie. But the second movie is much better than these two. Now, but the only. The only nick, the most, and only nick pick I had as a kid, that Fred hair is black. Not my Fred. Not my Fred at all. I know I said looks don't matter, but I still don't think I, I still don't accept Fred being, being brown hair. That's not my Fred. Not my Fred at all. I used to, I used to thought this is still better than the rest of them, but after we watching it, this movie feels so rushed, though. It's like they're not even taking their time. Right now, there's a second movie. Now let's go to that right now. The second movie is not even better, and it did, and they did, and it looks like they didn't learn their mistakes at all, at all. And it looks like they didn't even learn their mistakes at all. They still try to. They still try to do the same exact thing. Try to make these movies canon to the original when it's not. They're ignoring the pup named Scooby Doo. At um, they ignoring the pup named Scooby Doo instead of adapting the pup named Scooby Doo and put it all together just like what Scoob did. Yes, Scoob. It's not better than Scoob. Okay, guys, now let me tell you the difference between Scoob. I know it's some, you know, a different Scooby-Doo universe. You know, it's the How My Barrier universe. How My Barrier attempted to make a cinematic universe, and Scoob is their first movie. After the first movie, it, it was, I, I don't know, I don't know if it flopped or it succeed.
The Scoop Cinematic Universe is going to continue by making a second movie, but unfortunately, it it was canceled and it's unknown what happened. I don't know if it's still happening though. Okay, now let me explain why Scoop actually worked. Number one, Scoop follows the Scoop follows the, the whole Scooby Doo lore, the Scooby Doo franchise, and they and it looks like they actually care about Scooby Doo and it and it looks like they actually wanted to make this cinematic universe. True, they made changes here and there, but this is what makes the better adaptations in the live action movies. They tried to make this a great adaptation. They tried to make this. They really cared about the Scoop. They really care about Scooby Doo, and they didn't try to make this canon at all. They tried to make its own universe. So yeah. So yeah, they even they even follow the pup named Scooby Doo. They even follow the pup named Scooby Doo by making Scooby and Shaggy meet first. They did skip over Scooby's parents, but it's for the best because, again, it's their universe. It's a cinematic universe. That's how Scoo, um, succeeds. And they'll get a second movie. Speaking of, let's go to that right now. So yeah, guys, see, look, they actually care. They actually follow the entire Scooby-Doo lore. Yeah. They even tried to do it even more by trying to make a sequel. You know, Scooby-Doo Holly, Scooby Holly Hunt, they almost done with the whole movie. They show the screen test, and it shows how much they actually cared. But no, but these two, but these three movies, on the other hand, but these three movies, on the other hand, does not get or does not capture the same magic what Scooby-Doo is so good. The live-action movies did, but they didn't try to make, make it canon to the original at all. The prime, and here's a few examples. How? Now let's go to Velma and Daphne. And Velma and Daphne, there's a trailer, there's, there's a trailer trying to convince us that this is how the game met. It first, it first, you know, starts with Velma and Daphne met first. Then they try to make a sequel, and they're gonna make, and I bet they try to add, then they're gonna add Scooby, Fred, and, and Shaggy. Team up with the Scooby gang. So yeah, they tried to, I bet that's their ideas next. But really, again, it does not work. It does not work because they cut them out entirely. They ignore the pub named Scooby-Doo. They ignore every single possibility. They try to make it as its own thing. But here comes one good thing that the Velma series actually did. Yes, the series that me and the rest that we actually hate. Here comes this one thing that they actually did was good. They tried to make it as their own and not try to convince itself not canon. But these two live action movies, on the other hand, try to make it canon, which it does not work and why it failed miserably. That's why it does not work at all. Not only that, but they rushed, but they rushed it too. 
these two movies felt rushed. They didn't capture any single, any single possibilities, any single uh, traits, or any single characters who they are at all. The Scooby Doo live action movies try, but still, these three, these three movies didn't do, didn't do jack at all. Let's not, let's not forget it. Oh, don't even get me started on Scooby-Doo Custom Lake Monster. That rap song is absolutely cringe. They could have just ended with, I can be scared with you. I can be scared because I'm with you. That could have ended like, like that. Just like how the Cartoon Network did. If you want to know how I watch it, I was at Cartoon Network, and it was premiered on Cartoon Network, and that's how the movie ends. I can be scared with you, but no, there's more. There's more musicals, and not only that, but that rap song shows all the Scooby the movies claim that they actually went on this adventure. So yeah, they grabbed those Scooby the DVDs. And they start rapping. They start. They act like they're so cool. They act like they're so freaking cool. And then they try to convince us that they're, this is canon. I'm getting sick and tired of these Scooby Doo movies. Keep trying to make make these live action movies canon, but in reality, these movies adaptations are not even canon. Adaptations like the Velma series, adaptations like these are not canon. At least James Gunn. At least James Gunn did it right. These movies, on the other hand, didn't do anything to make it canon. Scoop did it right because they tried to make its own universe. Like Scooby's parents never Scooby ne never talked about his parents at all. Scooby is just a stray dog, which I can forgive that. It's its own universe. But these got but these on the other hand did not do didn't do anything to was Scoob including these live action movies tried, but no. Tried to make it as its own thing, which these what habitations are. It doesn't need to follow anything from the original at all. But these movies did don't get how all this works at all. These movies are rushed. These movies are these movies don't care about the possibilities. These movies don't. And it's like these movies never watch the show whatsoever. They try to capture the magic of Scooby Doo, but really, it they don't. It's like the last Airbender went. These adaptations are terrible as a result. These adaptations are terrible. Let's not let's not forget about Scooby Doo the Curse of the Lake Monster. It loses my respects even more when they when they focus on relationships, ignoring mysteries. Absent Scooby gets lo less screen time in the second movie. Scooby gets less screen time. Making Shaggy Making Shaggy and Velma had a thing together, which is good, but now it's now this whole movie is entirely pointless because they all broke up at the end. Yeah, Velma and Shaggy didn't go together at the end. They did kiss, but they're not together at all. What's the whole point of this movie? What what's the whole point of of trying to make this canon at all? They didn't. Yes, they did. Yes, they dated in 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 Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated, but at least they, but at least it's a good reason why Shaggy doesn't want to be with Velma. He wants to be with Scooby because that's his whole character. He likes Scooby more than Velma. But but these three movies, on the other hand, didn't do anything. But this movie right here is is all about relationships besides mysteries. They ignore the they ignore the monsters. They 
Oh, and speaking of monsters, I like how the monsters in these two movies look. It look exactly like ghosts. The ghost doesn't look terrible, though. And for once, the, the leg monsters are actually looking great. The jokes were funny. Some jokes aren't even funny at all. Again, these movies are feel so rushed or so cringe. These three movies are... Again, I hated how these three movies or some other movie... I'm glad the development series didn't, didn't follow any footsteps of, the, of these three movies. Try to make it canon to the original. But in adaptations, they're not canon at all to the original. They're not canon at all. Those are just habitations. You make your own thing. This is what makes the live action Scooby Doo movies and and Scoob good because it's its own thing. Those are habitations. There has to be changes. Whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. But there has to be changes that make sense. And this makes sense because this is from the original. They follow the original. They care about Scooby-Doo. They care about the cinematic universe. But this movie didn't try at all. But these movies didn't try at all. No, okay, I, 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 that's enough. That's enough. That's enough for these complaining. That's enough for these criticisms. Let's continue. Again, these live action movies didn't didn't beat the the rest of the Scooby Doo movies, so they're not gonna be in a fantastic tier. Anyways, now let's go to the Scooby Doo movie. Well, it's not better than the foot well, the first one is is well this is a great habitation. Now let me explain. Yes, there's changes here and there. But thank freak but thank freaking God they didn't go with the already script because they did this is gonna be a terrible habitation. I know it has some changes, but there's a bunch of changes that I really hate. There's a bunch of changes that I really hate in the in the in the radar habitation. Oh god. Sorry guys, I'm just eating something, so you know, I'm just eating Scooby Snacks right now, so I can calm down. Sorry about my behavior, and sorry what I've been acting. Now let me explain. Well, the Scooby Doo live action movies, well, they actually good because they actually care about Scooby Doo. They actually love Scooby Doo. Well, even though the rest. You know what's enjoyable? Uh, Matthew Little. Matthew Little is one of the most enjoyable vocasting casting choice of all time uh, of these of these three movies of these two movies. He's much more enjoyable in the second movie. He's way and much more funnier. It's like Matthew Little actually loved this character Shaggy. Unlike other habitations, because it seems like none of them cared. Rappy Little had a lot of fun in these movies. Include, include the guy who played as Scooby. The guy who played as Scooby is good, but the lot, but the CGI of Scooby is not is not even better. Is not even what I was expected. Scooby Doo looks like a real dog, but with human eyes. But the problem is, he has human. He looks like a real Great Dane with human eyes. There's a lot of funny jokes. There's a lot of funny scenes. 
The adult jokes were funny. Those part, those party scenes, those Scooby Doo and Shaggy party scenes were hilarious. Were hilarious, if you ask me. Yes, they got his own logo. Yes, Scooby Doo is so. These Scooby Doo live action movies. James Gunn. James Gunn live action movies are very enjoyable. They they actually care about these characters. They they had its own thing, like any adaptations. I'm glad they didn't go. They didn't go with the whole radar script because Daphne is terrible in the radar script. Fred is one of the most saddest characters in the radar script. But my only problem about the about this movie is that one why why didn't Velma and Fred get together? This development for those two, why not? Look, I get it Daphne what and Fred dated in the original, but still. But still, it's not a badly made movie. The monsters are ter- The CGI is terrible though. Like the monsters. Scooby Doo CGI is, is better than the rest of them. The reveal of. The reveal of Mary Jane monster. The Mary. The reveal of Mary Jane, you know, turns out to be a monster in the mask, you know. I don't like that either. Scrappy Doo being the villain, I used to hate that, but but I was shocked though. Because as a kid, I was shocked because I wasn't expecting Scrappy Doo would be a villain at all. I thought Scrappy Doo was was just a cameo, but a pointless cameo. But no, he's not. He's actually a villain with less screen time. We have great motivation why he wants to why he wants to take over the world and why he wants to get revenge on the Scooby Gang. But kick him out. But kick him out of the Scooby Gang. So he tried to get so his he possible revenge. So he possible with revenge for it. And honestly, that's a great motivation because it makes sense. Because, like I said, it makes sense. He wanted revenge. Yeah, but the way how the way how um, but the transformation of Scrappy Doo turned into a monster is kind of hilarious. I should be scared, but the transformation is kind of hilarious. They try to make like any other. Like any other Scrappy Doo cameos, they try to make Scrappy a joke, and this is the prime example, which is no time for joking. It's time to be, it's time to be scared, not joke. All right. Anyways. Anyways, I gave Scooby another Scooby snack when Scooby Doo slapped his own nephew in, across the wall. Honestly. Scrappy did deserve it though, so I gave Scooby a Scooby snack. Yeah, I replayed that scene when Daphne gave Scooby a Scooby snack for slapping, for slapping Scrappy in the across the wall, across the wall. 
Because I do hate Scrappy Doo. He's so annoying. Now he plots with revenge. Yeah, I just I I thought the live action movies are canon, but it turns out it's actually not. Because live action movies are actually adaptations. Yeah, in my opinion, in this Scooby Doo live action movie doesn't feel like anything from Scooby Doo. The souls, you know, this this whole thing about souls coming out and all of this that. The chosen one is Scooby Doo, the magical spells and all that. It doesn't feel right for Scooby Doo, including the live including the radar script. They try they try to compare this to Zombie Island. It's too similar to Zombie Island. I don't hate this movie. I actually love this movie than the rest of them. I have no opinion on on Mystery Begins. I hate it because of the leg monster and I hate and I and I especially hated the Daphne and Velma's the and Daphne and Velma's um So yeah, I actually love these movies. They capture all the characters, they seem accurate, that they try their best to make this a great habitation. Yeah, most adults was expected Shaggy, you know, become a stoner. Because there were some scenes that scra that Shaggy, you know, Shaggy is a stoner in this movie because he actually make a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, smoking stoner adult jokes, though. Yeah, and I also dis- and I also dislike that, um, Velma's, um, new friend. He has no name, he has nothing to do with the whole story, at all, and it's definitely, also, is Velma supposed to be, a? Uh, is Velma supposed to be lesbian though? Oh, and what if I told you that, rem remember, rem remember how people complain about Scooby-Doo design in these movies? Well, guess what? It's gonna be much worse, because Scooby-Doo was originally supposed to be, supposed to be a puppet. But they change it because they they change it because I don't know. Thank God they did because I don't want to see Scooby Doo see, become a puppet. It's so ridiculous. So they grab it. So they got. So they you. So they use a brown gray Dane and they make Scooby CGI. That's it. Scooby Doo was originally supposed to be a puppet throughout this whole movie, but they changed it. They tried to make this a great habitation, but critics hated this because there's so many unnecessary changes, which there's so many unnecessary changes. They hated this, they hated that. It's one. But back in the day, this movie is a success. It has. It bought. It. The box office is great. This is one of the great movies out there. Now let's go to the second movie. The second live this is one of the best Scooby Doo live action movies I have ever seen. It's way more better than the first one. It reminds me like in the cartoon. The Scooby Gang feels like in the cartoon. They look so accurate. They look so I wish Fred got his ascot though, but the actor who play as Fred don't like wearing we're ascots, so that's why Fred don't wear ascots. This is the whole point of Fred's character. I just hate how these live action adaptations don't have Fred's ascot at all. I just dislike how Fred never had his ascots at all in these adaptations. That's my only complaint here. This, that's my only complaint here so far. I like the character seems more accurate, more faithful than the first one. This movie seems more faithful to the first one. Capture all childhood. And captures all childhood since the first movie realized its mistakes and failed. They realized they put so much changes in facts that in fact that they had to make it much more appealing to kids. And it worked. Unfortunately, critics hated this movie because because, you know, they say it's one of the worst out there because 
of the post credit scenes. They pumped up. They sponsored this Game Boy home. In the post credit scenes, Scooby Doo um sponsors his own game, and they got a secret code. Unfortunately, when I bought a Game Boy, I was disappointed. Scooby Doo scared me. Why you what? Why you what? So I grabbed my Scooby Doo plush toy and I strangled him. I bought it ever since I was I was fifteen. I cannot believe I wasted my money and bought this and bought this pointless game. Huh. Oh, and did you guys know that Scooby Doo with uh, and that's good. That this movie has a lot more monsters. I know it has these other monsters, but there's a lot more monsters. But they'll cut out. But they'll cut out because it's way too scary. It's way too scary and un and unlook and unwatchable. They try to make this. They try to make this so accurate. They tried to make this so accurate, they tried to make all the Scooby-Doo monsters for each show to come. Now, here's for examples. Yeah, this is my, this is my last tier list because I just, I already ranked the shows and, and a lot of these habitations. It's not just me, but did you know that there's actually going to be more Scooby-Doo monsters out there? Yeah, there's actually supposed to be more. Yeah, there's actually supposed to be, um... There's supposed to be a Chicken Stein. Yeah, Chicken Stein's supposed to be coming to life. All of the, all of the, you know, all of them. I mean it. All of them. All of the monsters who was, all of the monsters. Yeah, there's gonna be a ghost clown. There's gonna be many more Scooby Doo monsters. All the costumes for the museum that was missing. That what? See, look. There's Captain Redbeard. That whole there's Captain Redbeard. You know, remember that pirate ship that 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 was. That was, you know, driving to the city. Yeah, that was Captain Redbeard. That was supposed to be him. Yeah, that was supposed to be him. Yeah, he was supposed to be driving. He was supposed to come to life. And this Kai Kenny Glob, I don't, I never see him in Scooby Doo at all. I don't know if he's in the shows. I, th I think he was added. I don't know. I don't know. There's supposed to be more of them, like the Headless Horseman. Like the Headless Horseman and a few others. All there's actually more monsters, like the witch. The mermaid, the all the all the iconic Scooby Doo monsters. Oh, and let's not forget the creeper. Yeah, the creeper. He was supposed to be in the movie too, but unfortunately, see look the museum. There it is. See look. Yeah, see look the witch.
Yep, Captain Redbeard. See, look, all the Scooby Doo monsters that you've been seeing at your childhood supposed to be in the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, not the ghost clown. Thank freaking god that he's not in the movie because he's terrifying. Now I get. No, there's actually test footage. There's actually test footage that these monsters are supposed to be here. Yeah, all of the monsters are supposed to be attacking the city. See, look, the headless horseman looks freaking horrifying to even look at. Yeah, remember that horse that Fred's supposed to challenge? That's supposed to be the headless horseman. But they change, but they cut him out and change it to the Black Knight Ghost riding a horse. Even though in the show, he never ride a horse. There's no horse at all. Yeah, the Phantom Shadow or Giggly Green Ghost. Yeah. There's actually supposed to be more monsters, more of them. All the monsters from the, from from your childhoods, they're supposed to be in this movie. All of them. Man, they try to make this accurate as possible to try to make this movie succeed so they can get a third movie, but it failed. Speaking of the third movie, it's going to be it's more interesting. Guess what? There's going to be a third movie. They're so passionate, they try to make all the monsters be in this movie, but they're too scary. So, it's kind of disappointing. The whole thing about Scooby-Doo's, um, um, defeating all the monsters by using a fire extinguisher. Yeah, Scooby-Doo never skateboarded at all. That's the, that's another change that most people never forget. Most people hated this change because Scooby-Doo never skateboarded. This is so... Inaccurate of him. It goes against that message that Velma been that Velma just told Scooby and Shaggy they need to accept who they are. I love the I love the arc of Scooby and Shaggy drop uh, wanting to be great detectives because you know they both feel like screw ups, but really, according to Velma, you have to be. You, you have to, it's okay to be who you are and all that. They don't have to be like them. I love that message, but it's kind of ruined with Scooby-Doo skateboard because Scooby-Doo never skateboard at all. You know, with his fire extinguisher, this is a, the, the movie could have succeeded if, if they didn't let Scooby skateboard at all and just come up with another idea to, they just, they could just come up with another idea yeah. It, this climax could have become the Scooby Doo, the Witch's Ghost. Could have been similar to Scooby Doo, the Witch's Ghost. Then the gang would use their personalities to get out of there to save the day. Then Scooby Doo and Shaggy will use their personalities to save the day. Because in the trailer, they said that Scooby and Shaggy. It's going to save the day at the end. Like, when Scooby-Doo defeat all the monsters, he was at the sky, Shaggy, Shaggy throw the, the control panel like a flea, and Scooby-Doo catch it. And Scooby-Doo delivers the badass line throughout the whole movie that I really like. Yeah, that's one of my favorite lines throughout this whole, throughout this whole live action movies. It's so badass. But again, these live action movies are not canon. They tried to make this the best Scooby Doo live action movies, but critics hated this. Most people didn't see the second mo movie because the first because they hated the first movie, so it's clear that they didn't watch the second movie. They said it's worse than the first movie, but really it's not true. The first movie is actually better in my opinion. It's, it's much more accurate. Hell, even a lot of YouTubers who hated Scooby-Doo saying that the, the second movie is even better than the first movie. And honestly, I actually grown up with this movie. I love these movies. It's my childhood. 
I love these two Abitages, but these three Abitages sucks because they try to they try to make these movies canon. But in reality, it's never going to happen because Abitations are not are not canon. They're never going to be canon at all. It this reminds me of the cat in a hat when they screw up Cat's character. Instead of making him rhyme the whole entire movie, they make him they make him do adult jokes. Yeah, and try to call this canon, and they and they try to compare this, and same as the Scooby Doo live action movie, they could call this canon. Yeah, they try to do it to the cat in the hat and to the Grinch, but failed miserably, which causes no live action movies. Out of Zeus's work, out of Doctor Seuss' work, and it's actually, and it's good in my opinion. I hate it how these live action movies keep on trying to cap, keep on trying to you know, try to make this canon while not, while. While James Gunn, on the other hand. Did try his best to make the try all of his best to make the second movie a great habitation, a a great habitation, so they can make a third movie and end it. They go to end it with a third movie, but failed because of the post credit scenes. The post credit scenes really got people angry because all of this is for absolutely nothing. It was going to get a secret code, but no. If you actually play the game and you put the code in, you will realize all this was absolutely nothing. I really hated this idea. There's no secret code at all. Scooby scammed us. Something which Scooby-Doo would never do. At all. This is another thing that Scooby-Doo would never do. No wonder why people dislike, dislike Scooby-Doo and... and Not only Scooby Doo CGI is bad, that the, that these people have been saying, but they hated how Scooby Doo scam people like this. I don't hate Scooby Doo at all. I did not hate this movie. I actually love these movies. So yeah, if you guys like or hate these movies, I understand. Give, give. Give me your opinions down in the comments. Anyways, this is my last tier list. I already ranked the, 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 the movies and the TV shows. And now, I finished ranking the live action movies. Now, we're finished. That's it. That's it. Scooby out. Have fun. Now, Stay tuned because there's gonna be a because I'm making a school day movie right now. This time it's gonna be comedy wool because I have enough of I have enough of you know of Beyond Studio. They remove all the voices and all that. Anyways, I'll explain soon. I'll explain more soon. Now let's get into it. Uh, now. Bye guys, Scooby out.